are traveling through space uh, arrive to the ear and then they are converted into a mechanical pressure that changes over time, like the beating of a drum, eardrum, that then is converted into pressure within this lymph fluid, which then moves these little hair, quote unquote, hair cells, which then activates neuronal signals that go up to the brain and Remarkably, I mean, to this day, I'm a you know neuroscientist, and it still blows my mind that then we perceive language, we perceive music, we recognize a cry versus laughter, and it all happens very, very fast. Um, I think most people don't think about hearing that way. And so, could you um, uh, explain for us the the elements within sound waves that sort of create this uh, this incredible architecture that we call the perception of hearing? sounds as they set in motion the tympanic membrane, the eardrum, and then lead to motion of hearing bones. There are different modes of vibration depending on both sound intensity and frequency. Once they get transmitted to vibration within the inner ear, everything is tuned in the inner ear. So the cochlea is a coiled organ. Uh, cochlea even means a uh, snail in, in Greek. So now if you uncoil it, then it's a tube. And high frequencies are encoded at the base, close to the middle ear, and low frequencies far away at the apex. And so when sounds, sound waves come in, if they're of high frequency, they will cause primarily vibration at the base of the cochlea. If they're of low frequency, they have to travel all the way up, and this is where speech resides at higher frequencies. It's interesting that the high frequency end of the cochlea tends to be more vulnerable to various insults, like noise levels that you uh, pointed out, certain drugs, uh, and aging. Now, in terms of uh, music being so essential for being human and our ability to communicate, uh, this is a podcast, so it highlights how important our ability to communicate and hear that communication is essential.